So, hello, 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 and a massive hello to everybody. Hope we're all having a great day uh, wherever you are, whatever you may be doing. Hope you're having a great weekend. This is 50 Pips rocking and rolling 23rd of September 2018. So, welcome, welcome, welcome as we head into the last trading week of the month and of the quarter. So, let's get this uh, let's get this going. So, we've had an awful lot of uh geopolitical news over the weekend so it's going to be interesting to see how markets open up you know iran uh opec headlines china headlines etc etc so it, it should be an interesting week now really uh the theme for the week is central bank week right we've got apart from wednesday which is the big day where we have the fomc and the rbnz both with a presser really it's all about the fomc which is expected to raise rates. We'll have to see if it's going to be, you know, uh, um, a dovish hike or whatever, a hawkish hike. We'll have to see what comes out of there. We also have final GDP out on, on Friday, but really uh, on top of the Fed, which is really the main show, we've also, we, we still have Draghi, Karuda, Powell, uh, Polo speaking during the week. So, so it should be fairly interesting. Now, Let's look at some of the key charts. Bonds, what's happening on the bonds? So here we're continuing on this, uh, pressing the low end of this channel. You know, we'd expect some kind of a, of a bounce here. You know, we've been uh, structurally bearish bonds looking for this move all the way back down. And, and here we are, right? So could this have a little bit more downside? Sure, the way we're looking at this is that the chop zone or the danger zone is this, you know, all the way from 105 into 138. Now, of course, this is a wide range, but keep in mind, this is a channel going back from 1999. So it's 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 a very big time time frame we're looking at. Um, why are we saying this? So again, as long as we hover here, this is in terms of bigger structural moves. It's much to do about nothing. Now, if we trade back above, this could be very explosive to the upside. And more importantly, if we trade below, right, these 138s, the things could be get funky and disorderly and you're really gonna have to pay attention. Now, right here, so far the action is quite nice, right? We've hit the bottom end of the channel and if you look at the action on the daily chart, you see essentially what, what are we getting here? It's a fairly classical basing pattern, right? We're right back at those previous lows, We've clipped those lows and we're not really getting any traction. So unless we get a close below this level now, what this would suggest is that we're going to get some kind of bounce. And you see this could even bounce all the way back to the upper end of that range and still stay in trend on the moving averages. So again, uh, looks like it wants to uh, hover around at lows and try a little bit of a bounce. It's all about continuation and it's all about this bigger chop zone but really in terms of being aware unless you're trading this in, in, intraday when you there could be a very big shift and aggressive repercussions in the market the biggest thing to watch out for is again if we trade below these 138s if we take that out to the downside okay now gc uh, a lot of talk uh, about you know gold and metals getting uh, killed etc cetera, etc cetera. i mean all things being equal gold is not not holding up too bad, right? All things considering. Now we're hovering around uh, this 2000 mark with plenty, plenty of opportunities for this to be gotten smacked down very aggressively. And so far it's holding. Now we're still in favor of looking at, at, at getting long here. I think the play really, and I'll try and do a video about this this week on, on the video updates or so and touch up on this i think it's a far more interesting play to get exposure to this uh through the miners or through some specific um gold or silver names but again uh keep an eye what happens here throughout the fed now especially if we get that classic kind of action to the fed where this kind of tries a puke and then it reverses, then you would expect this to have a lot of room to squeeze to the upside. So if we get through uh, FOMC and we can't take out those lows, I would not be surprised to see 1250s, 1300 come into play fairly quickly. You have to be careful trading this intraday because there being a lot of uh, what we call hit and runs. But look at this, you know, you can go back on this daily, essentially apart from this, you know, 
um, attempt here. You know, we've been here since the um, pretty much the better part of a month, if not more, just going absolutely nowhere. So all things being equal, we think this is holding up relatively, uh, relatively well. Now, what's the uh, the most interesting chart is the DXY. We've been talking about the DXY for uh, for quite some time, and here it looks like you know it, it's roll it's rolling over. Now you know you had this. It was trying to hold here. It's just broken down. It's a tricky one because there are a lot of different areas of support here, but. Our, our control chart is the weekly, but right here, even if we're looking at the daily, the fact that now we're trading back below this 50, we've traded back below the 100, everything is pointing to the fact that even if we bounce, these two moving averages should act, this whole zone and this whole topping area should act as resistance for a renewed move back into the 200 day and 9267s. Now the chart we've been trading, which we felt was extremely uh, interesting signal and high outs trade was the aggressive trade on the 50 back of this move down. Looking at this failure on the weekly and we're looking for the move back into the 50 on the weekly. So also on Twitter, we've been talking about the 50 weekly moving average being our target. That's the uh, 9260s. Now what's interesting here is that if you look at it this way, right, you've got this move from A to B back here and we're going down and this 50 is also coming in line with some previous levels we have there, but also smack in line with the 50 back of this move from A to B. This is the 50 back. So you've got a lot of confluence around this zone. So we still think that any rally that can't be sustained, which in any way should meet resistance, this is the path of uh, of least resistance and we're still in play on this trade so let's see what happens now clearly if we break below that 50 then game on for the extension for the move to try and take out those lows and then extension targets but that's still um a while away what that what how does that translate to some of the other swings we have on and some of the pairs we've been looking at again things don't always move in a straight line so you you always have you, you always want to see a healthy market right so what's happening uh and and we've been talking about this blog too you know in the in in, in the open source or the the open content too um how these moves have been very very nice but uh and, and we were looking for these rotations but here the, the quick pips are probably done right so you saw this very nice uh, take out those lows reversal here. We're looking for the move back into 73s. You see how it stalled right at the 50. So this is clearly trying to stay in trend, you know, 50, 100 and the 200. So you have you clearly don't want to start getting long here. That's the same as all those guys who got long on on DXY when it broke and then closed that weekly negative here. If anything, you're either taking some off, trying to scalp a little to the downside. And then, you know, we'll have to see if the bids come back here to support this level to continue the rotation higher or not. But the quick pips are pretty much done there. It's the same thing on USD CAD. You know, we talked about this action and all the commodity currencies on the blog again. A uh, very, very nice action here, right? This failure here for a move back into the descending trend line, that move is done too. Now, again, if we agree a deal on NAFTA, etc., our base case is still that we should uh, will easily get a move back into the 127s, possibly 126s if that gets agreed. But for now, the quick pips are done. Uh, the most interesting trade for us was uh, Kiwi, also because of the stretch positioning on the COT data. And here, this is, uh, see it held, held a little bit, closed a little bit stronger than, than the Aussie. But again, the quick pips are likely done here. Now we'll have to see how we trade into this week. A little bit of choppy action. We'll have to get the uh, through the FOMC. Right now, this still continues to be the base. If we can't take this out, then the path of least resistance, again, what we're looking for is the 68s. If that gets taken out, then it could get very squeezy to the upside. Think about the unwind we saw on Swissy. But again, the quick pips are done. Euro, USD, that doesn't mean the moves are done, but the quick pips are, move, uh, quick pips are likely done. 
euro. What was our base case for a euro? Our base case was that this was a fake out move, much to do about nothing, and that we had to retest the opposite side of this ECB range. And again, the lazy trade, what is the lazy trade being? The lazy trade is being long, uh, 115.50, stop below 115.00, looking for 118s, and then short 118, stop above the 118.50, looking for a move back into the 115.50. Now, of course, we have a, a, a more detailed structural long-term view, but as long as it stays in range, that's the range, and you see how, how beautiful the reaction was right into this level. You know, you don't get long into resistance. If anything, the quick pips were done. Friday was flan out, take some profits or try and be tactical to the short side. Now we'll have to see how we trade post that FOMC, but keep in mind that any move lower that can't get any traction now, similar, it's the opposite of the XY, support there can open up a very aggressive move back into the 200. So all those things are trying to play out. We'll have to see a little bit of pauses healthy ahead of the FOMC. Now, in terms of the equity markets and FANG, you know, we've been highlighting the fact that we think FANG is broken. You know, I'm not going to go through all those chart Netflix, PayPal, uh, Facebook, you know, all those charts that broke. But finally here, if you look at the action, and we'll have to see how we now and now we got through that quadruple witching, how we open today. But our base case is still, especially if we can't take these highs back out, is that we've got more to correct to the downside. There's a lot of room to go to the downside. And it should be interesting because even if you look at Apple or, or Amazon, you see how we're at key levels and it's all about these 50 DMAs across the board in different ways, shape or form, whether they're attracting, whether they're going to be uh, pivotal levels with them being a uh, um, bull bear lines going into the week. But clearly, there's a, an awful lot of interesting action. And if you look at the NASDAQ, again, how we open today in the fall third is going to be really, really key. But you see here, it, it's hovering. But again, we get a day close below here, that 50 is going to be calling. We get that taken out, then we should see some decent acceleration to the downside. It's a little bit, um, it's a little bit early to tell. We have to keep an open mind. We'll have to see what happens through the uh, FOMC. But especially the real interesting trades have all been derivatives of that weekly failure on the DXY, which is a very nice, very, very nice pattern. So here, our uh, base case is the quick pips are done going into FMC. We don't think the moves are necessarily over, but we're going to be cautious in the way we tactically manage these, okay? Wishing everybody an awesome week ahead. Let's see what we get. Thank you so much for sharing, liking, following, retweeting, the whole um, the whole stuff, everything. It's always very, very much appreciated to see that, that people like the content. Have an awesome one. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.